Hello everyone, this is uh, Mr. Nolan, and uh, I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a, a quick lecture here on biosynthesis, um, just sort of on the basics of biosynthesis and sort of what's the foundational concepts behind it and how does, what does it look like. Uh, our goals for this uh, screencast are to be able to model biosynthesis by using um, the little models uh, to create proteins, fats, and starches. That's what we want to be able to look at, is really all of these. Um, typically, uh, in, in a lot of videos online or whatever, they focus a lot on proteins, but we're also going to spend some time on these other ones. So, what are the basics of biosynthesis? What does biosynthesis sort of look like? Well, the basic idea behind biosynthesis, we've got bio, and we've got syn, and we've got thesis. And so, if you consider the Latin and Greek basics of all these things, um, we've got bio, which means life, syn, which means together, and thesis, which means to place or put. So we are putting pieces of things together in living things. That's what's happening with biosynthesis. So in biosynthesis, what we do is we take small pieces. These are called monomers. And they undergo a reaction to form a long chain. Sometimes it's a long chain. Sometimes it's, it's smaller to create a polymer. Mono means one, poly means several or many. So here are monomers, we've just got one at a time, right, I've got one, 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 one. Over here, my polymer, I have many monomers stuck together to make a polymer. So this is really the, ba the most basic idea behind biosynthesis, is that we're trying to actually create a larger molecule from smaller molecules. So a little chemistry involved here, so we're going to kind of zoom in here. We're going to go ahead and look at what does the chemistry of these look like. Let's look at a stock example where if we're going to try to do biosynthesis of proteins. Well, one of the, the uh, things that typically happens when we have biosynthesis is that we have a waste product, and that waste product is water. And so that's something that we're going to have to try to remember is that um, water is a waste product. So water is our waste product. So um, how does this happen? What does this look like to end up with water as our waste product? Well, in something like, let's say, proteins, um, we need to actually put these together in, in, in order to form uh, a, a single um, protein from all these different amino acids. So how do we do this? How does, how does this happen? Well, we're going to start with one of our amino acids here. We have our, our amino acid glycine. Uh, and what the cell does is the cell actually takes these amino acids and it jams them together. And while that's happening, it actually breaks off uh, an, an OH and an H to form water. So this amino acid glycine is going to have its OH broken off. And in the meantime, let's say that we wanted to hook it up with some uh, cysteine. The cysteine is actually going to lose uh, one of its hydrogens, and this will actually connect with that oxygen. And our amino acid glycine is going to come down here. And we're going to actually form this special bond right there between the carbon and the nitrogen. So we formed a uh, carbon-nitrogen bond. And uh, so while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep adding uh, proteins to this. So our OH in, on this other protein ends up getting broken off. And our H, again, on our nitrogen ends up getting broken off. And this protein... ends up, or this amino acid rather, ends up hooking with that protein right there. And so we're building our protein one amino acid at a time. To complete our protein, what we're going to do is break off that last OH, break off this last H. So these two sort of, this water sort of goes off. And this amino acid will go hooking down here to the rest of our protein. So we end up producing three wastewaters, right, those are, those leave, and we're forming three new bonds. Here's this one between the carbon-nitrogen, there's that one between the carbon-nitrogen, and that one between the carbon-nitrogen. Those are new bonds. And they have a name, they're called peptide bonds. 
If we're talking about proteins, we're talking about creating peptide bonds. So when it's all said and done, we end up uh, having created some wastewater as a product and creating some new bonds uh, to make a protein. So that's what it looks like to biosynthesize protein. Let's kind of zoom in and look at some other examples. For instance, starch. So let's look at biosynthesis of starches. So in biosynthesis of starches, we have sugars. We're really starting with sugars. That's our monomer, because we're beginning with sugars. Um, but you notice that there's no nitrogen in these sugars, and so we can't bond carbon to nitrogen. We have to bond carbon to something else. And so um, what we end up doing here is we are going to break off an OH from the sugar. We're going to break off a hydrogen from that sugar. This water is going to take off. This will go away. And we're going to have this monomer hook up with that monomer so that we actually get a sugar that has two monomers put together. This is a very simple uh, starch called a dimer because it has two pieces together. We can keep going. We can break off another OH and another hydrogen to produce our wastewater. And this goes away. And our other monomer comes and hooks up to that polymer so that we end up with a, uh, a relatively simple small starch. I mean, you could call this a trimer if you wanted to. Um, but what we've really got going on is we have our, uh, our, our sugar, uh, which has been bonded together three sugars to make a polymer or a starch. We've created two wastewaters. And the new bonds that we formed were right here and right here. So we form new bonds, okay? So we're actually forming, again, we're forming new bonds. So now we've created sugar, I'm sorry, starch with some wastewaters as well. And one thing to notice, you create a wastewater per bond. You create a wastewater per bond. So here I bonded two uh, times, and so I produce two wastewaters. Uh, but if we look up in the previous example, we actually created three bonds. We created a bond uh, here, here, and here. And so that's why we ended up with three wastewaters. So uh, a formula that you can use to try to anticipate how many waters you're going to produce is the number of monomers that you stick together minus one, because it's really one water per bond that you form. Let's look at our last example, biosynthesis of fats. This one's a little bit odd because <coughs> the monomers are not identical. They're actually different. In fats, you have a glycerol, and the glycerol bonds with three fatty acids. And so this looks a little different. We, don't, we can't just string them together in any order that we want. We sort of have to be judicious and be sort of careful with how we're going to do this. So um, the glycerol is sort of the backbone of a, of a fat. Uh, when, when it bonds these fatty acids. So what a cell, for instance, in a plant is going to do, it'll take a glycerol and it will break off the hydrogens from this glycerol. And in the process, it will actually break off the OH from, uh, from the fatty acid. And these will begin to actually uh, hook up and, and bond with our, uh, with our glycerol here. So here I'm going to break off another OH. These are going to start to bond with our hydrogens. And I'm going to stick this one down here. And then we're going to have another one that's going to break off there. We end up with that there. And then this one is going to hook up here. So what we have done here is, again, we created a new bond there, a new bond there, and a new bond there. There, there, there. And for each one of those bonds, again, we've created wastewaters. We've created these H2O from each one of those bonds. So in this case, we have three bonds that are created, one, two, three. And then we have three waters that are created, one, two, three. So biosynthesis really is not all that complicated. Um, it's just kind of a matter of, of looking for uh, those, those uh, OHs on one molecule and the H of another molecule. 
Um, and once those, uh, those, those, those uh, monomers are, are sort of smashed together in the cell, we end up with our water, which is sort of a waste product, which has been squeezed out. So I hope that this was helpful um, in being able to, to try to think about how do we uh, do biosynthesis, how do we create a polymer from monomers. If you are confused about any of it, feel, feel free to zoom back and try to watch what I did again. Um, but this is really the idea behind biosynthesis, both of proteins uh, and of starches and of fats.